Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite backyard mechanic. And I got quite a few things that I need to address in this episode. And uh, I'm gonna take you through the bikes one by one, all right? So here, let's walk on to the H2. So here's a problem that's been creeping up with a lot of uh, H2s and a lot of people have uh, rear wheel bearing concerns and a lot of people are reporting that the rear wheel has some play well guess what mine has some play too now today i'm going to be changing that rear tire because it is shot but i am going to be inspecting it because i want to make sure that the play is coming from the rim and not the hub now according to some reports uh, Kawasaki reps have told customers that a small amount of play is okay, about one millimeter. So I'm going to have you guys look at this and you be the judge. Alright. You see that? Maybe that's not clear. So here, let me stand you up. in my trailer get you perfectly still and you guys let me know if you can see this see that it's very slight but it's definitely moving you can see it click right it's not the trailer rocking this is the wheel so I don't know if you guys can see that. Now, according to Kawasaki reps, uh, some rear rim runout is acceptable. But I'm gonna pull this off, make sure everything is torqued appropriately, and get this slick changed, and uh, and then moving moving on to the next thing. So here, yeah, let me uh, take you guys, pick you guys up. We're gonna walk across walk across my yard. got some more things going on so with the MV I got the spare power switch today and I've already tested it and confirmed that it is working so I'm gonna get that wired in place and then we'll be done with the MV um, I may need to get Actually, I will need to get another rear tire for the MV if I'm planning on tracking it. Um, I don't think that there's a full day left on this tire for drive grip. Uh, if the track was mostly lefts, then yes. But most of the tracks that I'll be visiting for the rest of the year are all rights. So this will have to come off and I'll probably chuck it because I don't have any plans to go to any left hand tracks this year. So I'll need to hit up Stick Boy down south to get a new R11 rear for the MV. Front tire has two days on it, and from the looks of it, there's two more days left in it. ZX9 is good. Front has a day and a half. Rear has a day and a half back there. I'm not gonna squeeze through. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Um, rear's got a day and a half on it. There's enough, another day left in it. So ZX9 gets nothing. Um, MV gets the new kill switch. ZX7 I worked on last week. It's got a good two days left in those uh, Dunlop Q4s. These are the Q4s that I ran last season and did the day on and did the review. Um, they got about two more good days in them. I'm, I'm gonna leave them in the ZX7 and do a mix of track and street. The track ZX7 or the 779 I should say is in the midst of getting the shark skins body work done. All this dirty stuff you can see is some residue from the wet sanding. Um, it's going to need a good hose down, but I won't be hosing it down today. What I'm going to be doing is pulling out these ram air tubes. I'm going to be stripping the paint down to the fiberglass. And I'm going to be smoothing out uh, this bondo that I have on the tail section. And I'm uh, going to get it smooth like how I did back here. And then go over it with some primer. So, I'm going to see how much I can get to this afternoon. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get everything done. But at the very least... The MV kill switch is going on. That um, Ninja H2 
rear wheel is uh, gonna have the tire swap and I'm gonna inspect the bearing and then from there I will come around and uh, get back to work on this now the dash you can see this is the stock dash of the ZX7 and it's a big bulky unit and like I said in the other video that's going to be coming off and uh, this tachometer is going to be going on along with this temperature gauge so that's it guys I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started setting everything up and uh, I'll take you along for the ride Sorry for the noise guys, my neighbors are having a party over there. I don't trust those threads guys. I'm probably gonna silicone those just to make sure they don't back out. I like to add a little silicone, um, you know, just to add a little extra insurance when those things back out. But uh, so far, so good.
All right, fellas, that's it. One down. So I'm gonna take a quick break, guys. I'm gonna go get the tire machine hooked up and then we'll get that rear H2 wheel off, all right? Be right back. For you savvy guys, you could just use a drill with an adapter. And uh, I'm dealing with a little bit of arthritis. So my hand is in some pain. I want to inspect and All right, so I'm inspecting this. And uh, here, let me get you guys closer. And I don't see any play of the bearing or the assembly. However, the rim itself, the wheel itself was definitely moving. Um, yeah. So that play that you're feeling with the wheel just looks like it's some rim run out. Um, it may have something to do with how it mounts on this plate. But I don't see anything here. That looks alarming. There is like not even a millimeter of play. It is a slight, a slight, tiny, tiny movement I can feel, but I'm not convinced that it's anything to worry about. So, you guys that are having some rear wheel play, pop your wheels off, and I would be concerned if this hub was moving. If this, this inner plate, you know, when I grab it as a unit, there's no play. If I just grab the rotor, there's a tiny, tiny bit of play. But there's no play when I grab this plate with the rotor and this side, you know, this sprocket over here. There's no play that I can feel. Um, so, I'm not too worried about it. But you definitely want to inspect these. Um, I know with for MV Augusta, it's been a problem. The hubs go after a few thousand miles. Um, and it's clearly, clearly evident that the needle bearing in the MV Augusta hubs go. They so guys, I got the rear wheel off. Um, I'm not sure if I was just recording. I don't think I was. So I'm going to film this again. I was talking and wasn't sure if the camera was running but basically um, there's no play that I can see in the hub if I just grab the rotor there's a slight, a tiny wiggle there I mean it's not even a millimeter I can feel it separate 
and then you know from whatever it's resting against but it's very slight but there's no bearing play per se so I'm not too worried about it now the wheel there was definitely some run out but that might have to do with how it mounts on these on these uh these studs over here um so I'm not sure what it is but I would recommend you guys if you guys are complaining of wheel play you pull off your rear wheel and just check from this ring right here where you tighten the chain to this plate and I would just wiggle that there's no play in there so I'm not really worried about it I think the needle bearing is in good tack now what I was saying before when I thought I was recording is that MV Augusta bikes have had issues with the bearing failing and uh, here I'll pick you guys up and uh, the needle bearings would go bad after some 6,000 miles, some 10,000 miles, some made it to 15,000 miles, some even made it to 20,000 miles, but eventually they fail. And so what a lot of guys did was they bought aftermarket hubs with a, with stronger bearings. So I know Design Course made one. Um, this guy Mitch in Australia makes a hub, and guys swear by these hubs. So um, if you own an MV Augusta, and I'll probably do the mod at some point too, just as a it's just preventative maintenance. Um, now I would recommend that the H2 I think I only heard of one failure and that might have been I don't know maybe it was user error maybe it was assembly error or something I don't know but um, I think guys are getting spooked when they see their rear wheel moving so pop your wheel off check the bearing itself if there's play on the bearing then yeah something to be worried about if it's just the rim wiggling a little bit I'm not gonna worry too much about my application you use your best judgment, take it to the dealer, have them look at it. Um, but obviously with these bikes, I'm pushing 250 to 300 horsepower. There's nothing you want to play with. If, you, if you're not sure, take it, get a professional look at it, and that's the best advice I can give you. In my case, I'm not going to worry about it. I think it's good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to get this tire off and uh, get the brand new uh, Bridgestone Slick put on there. And I uh, get the rear wheel mounted. I'll probably change the brake pads. And I think I'm going to leave the front tire alone. We'll see. Um, and then after that, I'll get started on uh, the ZX7 track bike. So I'll be right back, guys. All right, so that race compound was a little bit stiff. You saw I wrestled with it a little bit to get it off. Normally, I heat the tire up with my heat gun, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this rim wiped down and then uh, unpack this slick and uh, I'll probably put the heat gun in it for about two minutes, get it nice and, nice and soft, um, and then uh, just get it on. So let me go ahead and set that up, guys, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, fellas, I keep my heat gun on a low setting in there for about three to four minutes. It gets the tire nice and soft, so that way it slides right on the rim. So I'm going to let this do what it does, and then uh, I'll get it rolling again uh, when I'm ready to mount it back up.
more balanced and uh, mount it back on the bike. Alright guys, um, the wheel didn't need any weights, so that was super easy. When you stick with the same tire, especially when you're dealing with uh, slicks, uh, a lot of times you can get away with um, using the same weights from the last change, if you, especially if you're going with the same compound. So, let's get all of these on. Alright guys, got this first caliper loosened up and uh, you can see how low these pads are. So I'm going to go ahead and push the pistons back and get these out. And I'm going with uh, EPFA, EBC, Extreme Performance Pads. And you can see the difference, old versus new. So, this is not the regular um, 447HH, EPFA, Extreme Performance is a big difference. This is like the track oriented pad and then the GPA FX I believe it is is the race only pad but these pads are grippier than stock and they're not too hard on the rotors um, I'm very pleased with them to be honest should probably push those pistons back a little bit more so you know what why don't I do that I'm gonna go ahead get these new pads installed and uh, get this thing put back together all right, so I got the pistons pushed back pretty good. And that should go right on, no problem. And I already got the torque wrench set. I believe these take 25 foot pounds of torque. Much easier way to do this, guys, but I'm just kind of slumming it today. Didn't even pull the bike off the trailer. Um, I recommend spraying out your caliper with brake fluid, a uh, uh, brake cleaner, not brake fluid, brake cleaner, contact parts cleaner. Uh, highly recommended. I will do that once I get the bike off the trailer. I'm just saving myself some work. For next week, I'll probably do the rest of the stuff once I get to the track. And again, you don't want to over torque. Give the brake lever a couple of pumps. You can't see that. It's above the field of view. And uh, once, you get, uh, once you get feel back from the lever, you're done. So guys, that's pretty much it. So, got done today. Um, we did the, we did the, um, what do you call it? The kill switch on EMV, and that's done. And uh, we inspected the play and the bearing. The bearing looked okay. The rim had some run out. Kawasaki says this should, should be okay, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And uh, we got the brake pad swap, so. Um, next video probably get started on that ZX7 bodywork and the tachometer that I picked up the other day so